This is using standard deviation to describe students' performance in a math class. This is the pandas version, so Python version in other words. If you want to watch the statistical version, just pure statistic, like really figuring out standard deviation manually, then I'll put the link for the video in the description box. But this is the one where we're going to be using pandas to solve this. Well, not to solve, but you know, to do the goal, which is to describe students' performance in a math class. So first thing we want to do is we want to import the libraries that are needed. So that's going to be pandas for data manipulation, seaboard, and matplotlib for graphing. The next thing you want to do is to read in the data frame. So I'm going to have the data frame linked below also. Um, I did this in Google Collaboratory, so, and I'm pretty sure that in any other software or IDE you use, you could just copy the path. And so that's what I did. I just copied the path, the pa wow, the path of the file, and I pasted it into the read CSV method, right? So we're doing pd.readcsv. Readcsv um, is the method that you use to read in the file. The file is a CSV format, so CSV stands for comma separated values. So it's a comma separated value data set where the data is separated by commas. So that's why we use the read CSV method from pandas, right? Because remember, we imported pandas as PD here. And we set that equal to a variable data frame. So now when we call data frame, um, we're going to get this, right? So this is actually um, when we call data frame dot head, so df dot head, and that's going to print out the first five rows of the data frame, and this is what it looks like. And for some background information, this data frame is actually made up of 1,000 rows, or in other words, 1,000 students. So because of that, we're going to take a sample of the data, and you know, just for educational purposes and for graphing purposes, we're going to only take 10 students. And we're going to set this equal to a new data frame called sample df. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Then here is the sample that we took. This is what the sample looks like. So we have students, they're actually labeled by number. They are not identified by names. Um, and these, um, so this is what we're going to be calling them. We're going to be calling them student 373, student 229, or student 722. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to plot the distribution of student math scores. So first things first is the title. So I put distribution of student math scores. And then I'm going to use Seaborn histplot, right, the histogram plot. And we're going to set x equal to sample data frame math score. So basically the values of that column. And then we're going to set the color of the actual histogram to be light blue and the edge color, meaning the, the basically the border of each box. We're going to set that equal to none because I don't want the, there to be any borders. And so this is what the graph ends up looking like. So again, the color is light blue and you don't see like the separation of the boxes because the edge color is none, right? And you can also see the distribution of students' math scores, the title right there. So you have the math score and then you have the frequency or the count or how many times um, it occurred. Okay. So the question is, how did the students perform in their math class relative to each other? So the first thing you want to do in order to start comparing is you want to find something that that is, um, how do I say it, that is set, that doesn't change, that is fixed, and something that we can compare it to, we can compare their scores to, and that is the average, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the average math score and we're going to plot it. So in pandas, all you have to do is target the column that you want. So that's math score from the sample data frame. Apply the dot mean method or apply the mean method using dot notation. And um, you know methods are within are used with parentheses. And then run that, and it should give you 77.5. Now in context, we can say that the average math score is 77.5 points. Okay. So next. What you want to see here, um, or what you are seeing here, is the graph, is not the graph, well, yeah, the graph, the average plotted on the distribution histogram plot, right, the distribution plot. So what I did here was um, I started with the size of the graph, so I used matplotlib figure um, method and it has this argument called fig size and so I set that to 1510 so 15 is the width 10 is the height 
Next thing is adding the graph title and then adding some padding for the spacing between the title and the graph. Oh, that's a typo there. Should be an A there. But anyway, um, so we're going to do matplotlib, right? We import it as plt.title and then we add the, the title and then we have the padding, which is represented by the argument called pad. It's abbreviated. And then I set the padding equal to 15. So as you can see, there's a little bit of spacing between the title and the graph itself. The next thing is plotting the distribution of math scores, which we already did before. Only thing different is that we're adding this vertical line and the X value is basically where we want it to be plotted on the X axis. So that is 77.5 because we want it we want to plot the average, right? The Y minimum is zero because we want it to start from here, zero. And we want it to stop, I just said, to the max three. And then I put the color as black. And then the label, I put it as average um, 77.5, which you can see here. And that only shows up if you um, call the legend method, if you, if you give it a location. So upper left, even though this is not the upper left to you, but according you know, to the anatomy of a figure in matplotlib, that's what it is. And yes, so it only shows up if you call the legend. Okay, so this is what that looks like. Now that's for your reference, right? So the next thing is to find the standard deviation. So what does this mean in context? It means how many points do each student's math score deviate from the average math score? And then we have to plot it. So basically, how many, um, how much do the students' math scores deviate from the average math score? Like how abnormal are they or how normal are they? If we find the standard deviation, we can determine whether they are abnormal or normal. Okay. And the way we do that with Pandas, super simple, way simpler than having to do it manually is just again targeting the column that you want, the values that you want, so that's sample data frame math score. Um, apply the dot STD method, stands for standard deviation, and it should give you this long number and we're going to round it to the four decimal places, so that's going to be 11.2472 um, points. So what does this mean? This means that the student's math score deviates, well, each student's math, math score deviates 11.2472 points from the average math score of 77.5 points. Okay, now using this information, we are going to give you a graphical, well, why am I saying we? Like, I am going to, I'm like the only person here. So I am going to give you a graphical representation of what we just did. So we have the, the average already plotted. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you real quick, is show you what this table means. So we have the average 77.5. Now, the next little column is one standard deviation above the mean, and that's 88.12. Now, what did we do to get that number? We added one standard deviation, which is 11.2472. So when we add 11.2472, we get 88.12. 31 right and so what that looks like graphically if we add um, 11.2472 points it looks um, like that's what it is plotted on the line okay so basically what this means is from this black line over here which is the average to this green dash line this is one standard deviation above the mean right above the mean above the average okay to the right of the average however you want to think of it then you want to do the same. You want to do one standard deviation below the mean. So that's basically minus 11.2472, and you're going to get 66.8769. And when you plot that in the graph, right, it's going to end up looking like that. So what does this mean? This means, um, this actually, this entire thing means from this line here to this line here, it means one standard deviation plus and minus um, the mean. Okay, but from this black line here to this dashed line here is actually one standard deviation below the mean. Okay. Next is two standard deviations above the mean, so that means you're adding 11.2472 two times, or you're just adding 11.2472 to 88.1230. Okay, so you're adding 11 point, one standard deviation more, so that means two standard deviations you have in total, and when you plot that, that's going to end up being over here. 
this yellow line. So now you have two standard deviations. Well, not you don't have. You are two standard deviations above the mean. Okay. And then same thing. You want to do two standard de standard deviations below the mean. That means you subtract two standard deviations from the average. And when you plot that, it's going to give you this line right here. And then finally, you have three standard deviations above the mean. So that's another standard deviation you're adding. When you plot that, it's going to end up looking like this right here. And then when you plot it um, on the other side, three standard, three standard deviations below the mean, meaning another one below the mean, you are right here in the graph. So that's basically what um, the standard deviations look like. Using the plot that we just made, we are going to compare students' math scores relative to each other. So we're going to start with the first student, student number 373. Now this student got a math score of 82. Now if we go to the plot, um, to the distribution plot, we can locate 82 to be around right here. So it's actually um, within the black line and the, the green line. So what does this mean? This means that student number 373 is actually within one standard deviation above the mean. And what does this also mean? It means that they are actually within average because within average means you are within one standard deviation below or above the mean. So if you are between these two green dashed lines, that means you are within average. So you are okay. Moving on to 229, student 229, this student got a score of 88. Now 88 is actually, if you take a look at what the second standard deviation above the mean is, um, Oh no, the first one, sorry. It's actually 88.12. So 88 is actually right there, right there, but not so quite inside the second standard deviation. It's actually almost there, but not quite. It's actually within still the first standard deviation, um, just by like what, 0.12 points. So it's within the first standard deviation, so they are within average. Moving on to student number 722, this student got a score of 74. Now 74 is actually right here and we are going to say that they are within average as well because they are actually within um, one standard deviation below or above the mean and to be specific they are actually one standard deviation below the mean because this is the mean, this is the average, and they are below it, okay? So they are within it, right? They're not exactly one standard deviation but they are within one standard deviation below the mean. Moving on to student 909, this student got a score of 70. So now 70 is still here, so they are also within average because they are within one standard deviation below the mean. Moving on to student 194, this student had a 69. So this student is actually right about here, but let's make sure, so one standard deviation below the mean is actually 66.87. So if this is 66.87, that means 69 is about here, obviously. So it is, this student is actually within average um, because this student is actually one standard deviation below the mean, okay? Within one standard deviation below the mean. And that was student what? Um, student 194. So they should be here and within average. Okay. Now moving on to student 370, this student got an 84. So 84 again is right about here. So they are also within average because they are one standard deviation above the mean. Then moving on to student 689, this student got a 93. Okay, so 93 would be around here. So we can actually say that this student is actually within two standard deviations above the mean. Now, what does this mean? This means actually that they are they are above average because above uh, wow well, above average means that you are above or greater well let's say above one standard deviation below or above the mean so if you are two standard deviations above the mean that means you are above average if you're three standard deviations that means you're super above average and so on and so on you can say four standard deviations so that means you're even more <laughs> above average um but yeah, that's what that means. So student 689 is actually above average because they are two standard they are within two standard deviations. Um well not let's not say within. They are greater than one standard they are further than one standard deviation above the mean, but within two standard deviations above the mean. Okay? Because if we say that they are within two standard deviations above the mean, 
then then we can that can also technically they could be here right and we want to say that they're here so let's make sure that we specify that they are further than one standard deviation above the mean but within or at least below two standard deviations above the mean okay um, but yeah, student 689 is above average. Now, student 519, this student got a 67. So if we look at where 67 is, again, one standard deviation below the mean, that was 66. So 66, so 67 is actually right about here. So this student is actually within average. So they should be, what was it, 519? Yeah, they should be right here um, because they are actually one standard deviation below the mean or within one standard deviation below the mean. Student 708, this student got an 89 on their math class or their math score, right? Math score in their math class. So 89, again, is about right here. Um, actually, 80, one standard deviation above the mean is 88. So 89 is actually in the second standard deviation. So this student is above average because they are further than one standard deviation um, above the mean, but they are less than two standard deviations above the mean, but they're within that area right here. So they, this student, 708, is above average. And then finally, student 64, this student got a 59. So then um, if we take a look at where 59 is on the graph, that's right about here, and that's um, obviously um, within two standard deviations below the mean. Well, not like that. Okay, so it's it's less than two standard deviations below the mean, but it is greater than one standard deviation above the mean. Okay, so it's within this yellow line and this green line. So that means that they are below average. So this is basically how you would compare um, the math scores of these students relative to each other. So you can say, you know, students um, 373, 229, 722, and so on are within average. And then using this data, you can present this if you're, let's say you're like a teacher, um, they all took your math class and this is like your basically your like teacher data. And you can say, okay, well, um, they did most of them do pretty average in my class, right? But this person is below average. This person might need a little bit of work. So maybe you can recommend them to like a tutoring center or um, extra help, et cetera, depending if you're like high school, college teacher, I mean, call, a high school teacher or college professor, whatever you are. So, and then you can say above average, then you can recommend those students to be valedictorians or recommend those students to, um, I don't know, to a special program that you need to be like exceeding in a class or recommend those students to an honors math class for the next year. So, um, but yeah, ignoring, you know, ignoring what their college is, is let's pretend that this was just like, just the math score, just focus on the math score. But yeah, so those are some things that you can just, um, you can do with this data. So that's pretty much it, um, for this. If you want to see the statistical version where you, we find standard deviation manually, not that manually, I just tell you about it. I mean, yeah. So I just tell you about it. So if you want to see that, um, I'm going to post that video in the description box below. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.